guys welcome back to another video today we are reacting to portal the boots are alive the science of portals long fall boots by the game series so i really don't know what to expect so in three two one let's react dear valve please release half-life 3 sincerely Aw, oh, <laughs> just kidding. I'm here today to tackle the big one. The one topic I've been consistently asked about, like, literally since I started this show. The long fall boots long fall from boots. Portal. How do they work? They yeah. freaking don't. <laughs> but fine, okay, fine, let's do this. Bust out your pixel rulers, your pixel cups of tea, salute the queen for spiff, and let's get down to brass tacks. The long fall boots were a plot contrivance invented by the creators of Portal to justify not giving a crap about the laws of physics vis-a-vis -vis kneecaps and shattered ankles. They allow you to effectively fall from any height without consequence. They auto-orient you to gravity and <laughs> somehow absorb all the impact from a fall, allowing the designers to make puzzles without worrying yeah, about I'm, the safety of your- I mean, that doesn't work in real life. Life. I mean, you can't like fall, f fall from a tall building, uh, fall from a two-story building and have no consequence. I mean, you can't. It's just impossible. Your character when it comes to turning yourself into a ballistic weapon. Of course, you can shoot yourself into a wall at fractions of the speed of sound face first, and you still somehow don't die even though your feet had nothing to do with it. And while they definitely made the game more fun, they seem impossible. Like, yeah. really? Just this tiny spring right here to keep you from breaking your knees? Are you absolutely sure about that? It yeah, kind of seems like a bad work. idea to me. It's and in fact, as Reddit work. user Verdatum on the Theorist sub Reddit put it, these things, if they worked by compressing and then decompressing, they are kind of more like springs and shock absorbers. And they should, in theory, instead of dampening your landing, send you bouncing along the ground as though you just jumped yeah. on a trampoline. What they need to do instead is slow your descent and redistribute your landing forces to a wider and stronger area. But we'll get to that in a minute because first of all, we gotta do the fun part. Pixel measurements. Pixel you see, before we tear okay. apart the, nope, I mean, uh, before we get into how long fall boots work, we have to get a clearer picture of what's going on and what the scope of their effective parameters is. Specifically, we have to know the fastest way at which they operate and how quickly okay. they are slowing Chell down. What we need to do is figure out within a reasonable range of certainty, if possible, how tall Chell is. The the model, yeah. since that's what we're going to be using for all of our math. Now, the fan wiki for Half-Life claims that she's been calculated to be about 5 feet 4 inches tall, which, you know, I'd love to rely on, but somebody didn't show their work, so we'll have to do it okay. ourselves. How? Bed sizes. You see, you start Portal 2 in a weird fake hotel room. A hotel room that's filled with basically the only conventional stuff you'll see in the game aside from a few offices that are difficult to locate. And within that hotel room is a bed. A bed that has a mattress. A queen size mattress if i'm not mistaken okay. which would mean that it measures 60 inches wide by 80 inches tall using this we can approximate chell's height using the power of mathematics if our 80 inch or 2.032 meter long bed is 383 pixels wide and our chell model is 302 pixels tall this gives chell a height of 1.6 meters or almost exactly five foot three inches. So okay. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, hey, good job. Whoever did the math on the fan wiki, you got close enough. Five, four is definitely within the margin of error. That's nearly yeah. negligible. And for all I know, they were more accurate than I was using this shell as a ruler. We can measure the size of these panels in this room and find out that they are 2.73 
four, seven meters tall, which we can okay. use to figure out our top speed. All we have to do is the super duper fun and not at all defying the laws of physics thing of putting one portal over the other and using them to reach our tippy top of speed. See how far we travel in the space of one frame and BAM! We'll figure out our top speed. And yeah, okay. not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. 23.748 meters per second, or just over 52 miles per hour, or okay. 85 kilometers per hour for those of you who are literally anywhere but America. Unfortunately, it's here where things begin to go off the rails. <laughs> Being very, very generous with the stopping animation, I determined that at 60 frames per second, a mere 10 frames pass when Chell's feet hit the floor to when her landing animation stops completely. Point one six seven seconds. Point one six seven. Okay. seconds 141.89 meters per second squared of acceleration 14 g's if she weighs the average weight for a woman of her height 55 kilograms that is 7803 newtons of force going straight into her legs i don't care how much of that dinky spring thing supposedly absorbs the force this is very bad for your legs but you know, it's a video game. Let's just put aside Chell's definitely broken kneecaps. Is it even possible to fall from this speed and live with the help of a device like this? Maybe. In order to figure that out, we're gonna have to look at professional fallers, aka people who practice parkour. People who parkour regularly are really good at falling from heights, and the way they do it is by decreasing the force on their bodies by increasing the amount of time it takes them to slow down. They have a bunch of of rules and techniques for this. And rule number one is one that Chell has down pat. Don't lock your knees. Rule number two is always land on the balls of your feet and never land on your heel. Landing on the balls of your feet allows you to control the amount of flex you have in your legs and ankle and more importantly, landing on your heels will shatter your ankle. A jump as small as one from a chair can send you to the hospital if you land right on your heel. That's another thing that Chell has going for her. The long fall boots keep her ankle permanently elevated. So far, so good. But now comes the important stuff, deceleration time. Something you can understand more easily if we talk about impulse. This is the impulse formula. D okay. Don't be scared though because we're gonna simplify this for illustrative purposes because impulse in short is a impact force experienced over time and the impulse you'll experience from a jump or a fall will basically always be the same once you're in the air and falling. There's very little you can do without a jetpack or a parachute that will decrease the force you will feel in total upon landing because an object in free fall is a closed system. However, while this side of the formula impulse is basically locked in, we can play with these variables on the other side. For example, if we increase the amount of time it takes to slow down, we can decrease the peak force experienced because it will be spread out over more time proportionally. And this is how parkour practitioners save their precious kneecaps. The most common techniques for high falling in parkour are the roll and the four point slap out where the practitioner bends their knees as they fall, touches the ground with their hands, and this allows their entire body to drop almost all the way to the ground. The roll is basically the same thing, but it increases the amount of time and distance the torso or the center of gravity takes to reach the ground. Landings are measured from when the feet hit the ground to when the torso stops moving down and proper technique can take maximum force experience from as high as 7 G's where your ankles would experience what it's like to be over 1,000 pounds to as low as 2 G's from the same fall just by landing okay. properly. But it's here that we run into trouble. Very experienced parkour practitioners can sometimes jump from as high as two stories, even maybe three stories up in the air and land mostly unharmed. But the speeds at which the long fall boots work are way beyond this. They are equivalent to you jumping out the window of an eight story building. Eight story and the best building. parkour techniques okay. take deceleration time from about half a second to maybe like 1.2 seconds. From small heights, this makes a big 
big difference. And even in the case of Chell, this would decrease the force experience dramatically to only 1,083 newtons, which is pretty impressive, especially if you found a way to transfer that force into your femur, the strongest bone in your body, which would pretty easily be able to handle these forces. Unfortunately, if it's going into your femur, that means it's traveling up to where your femur connects your hip bone. And it only takes about 400 newtons to dislocate your hips. So while she may survive a fall at these speeds, yeah. there's no good technique that is going to let her literally walk away from this. In order to make sure that she doesn't just break her legs in a dramatic fashion, she'd have to increase her deceleration time to 3.3 seconds, which seems like a short amount of time. But well, this right now, I'm going to play 3.3 unedited seconds of silence for you. Okay. Oh. That felt like forever, didn't it? And the reality oh. is that there simply isn't enough space, no matter yeah. what equipment you're wearing and what your technique is, to slow yourself down that slowly. No way! What, are her, are, are her boots filled with black holes that bend space-time in such a way that when she lands, somehow, magically, there's actually more space crammed into that spot that allows her to fall somehow more? And then, and then even, let's say, let's just say, that that actually made any sense. What are even the implications of having black holes in your shoes? Uh, radiation, general bad things from gravity gradients. The only way they could possibly work is if they actually had rockets to keep her from going too fast. Or the little weird metal things actually extended several, and I mean like 15 extra feet in front of her so they could begin to decelerate her well before her feet hit the ground. And that's all ignoring that, hey, in the game, she slows down in .1 six seven seconds that's like crashing a car into a brick wall at 50 miles an hour but okay. without an airbag there's no oh, yeah. way these boots would ever possibly yeah. work period the yeah. end never gonna happen never shell gonna is dead are you yeah. happy you monsters who begged me for literal years to make yeah. this episode are you are you not entertained do not jump from eight story buildings and expect tiny yeah. as heck weird fetish boots to save your life they can't period yeah. that's why we invented the freaking parachute and safety nets because they yeah. actually work without shattering your freaking hip bones and we invented the parachute in 1783 so there you go <sighs> it's, it's never All right, gonna I'm gonna, gonna go take a nap. So I'm gonna get in here and okay. clean up the pile of bones and meat that is Shell's body now. Okay. It's like starting to get flies. Sincerely, Austin. So yeah, guys, I predicted it. It's never gonna work. You can't fall from a, an eight-story building and survive. You can't from a, fall from a two-story building or just not have an injury leave unscathed you can't do that it's never gonna work so yeah guys thanks for watching and of course peace a lot of people have peace peace